Surviving is the same thing as winning by Please Dial 123. Chapter 8. Not so quiet, nice. Stand still, Sakura howled. <laughs> now with those that got his tongue fingers wiggling stupidly. He yelled as Sakura changed direction suddenly and her hammer lashed out, slamming into him. With a pop, the clone vanished in a cloud of smoke. Sakura used the momentum of the spin to send her straight into the next clone. Multiple Navitos cursed and dove away as Sakura came after them, flipping into the air and using her own body weight to slam her hammer down hard enough to leave a crater. Not going to join them? Kakashi asked, deflecting Sasuke's Satsuma with a kunai. Sasuke sent him a look like he was crazy. Kakashi supposed that Sakura and Navito's deranged game of whack a ball might look a little too crazy. Sakura gave a shout as Naruto used his chain to grab her hammer out of the air and slam it into the ground, which consequently slammed Sakura into the ground because she had refused to let go. Sakura, he chided as he dodged a stab from Sasuke. You get broken fingers from holding onto a weapon in that situation. Best let it go and retrieve it later. You're not a samurai depending on this weapon. You are a ninja. Adapt! Yes, Sensei! Sakura groaned, levering herself out of her crater. Naruto was laughing at her, but cut off abruptly with a shriek as a Najinata nearly took off a clone's head. Mind if I join this bar? Get that so grand? Naruto scrambled away as Izumo lashed out out of nowhere as well. Sakura and Naruto scrambled away and started to retaliate as the Junin pair took out a score of clones. Must go help your teammates! Kakashi smiled. Sasuke had barely waited for the command and went spinning after Kotetsu as the man pulled his spear out of a post. While three near Chunin with good teamwork could take out a pair of Chunin with some good planning and ridiculous strength, this pair was no ordinary Chunin. Kotetsu and Izumo had some of the best teamwork in Kanaha and were never sent on missions without the other. They had often taken out Jonin together and were a force to be reckoned with. They kept ahead of Team 7 by just enough to tease them. It was a good workout for the pair, but there was no denial that they would win. Kakashi watched a long moment, then gave an unholy smirk and leapt into the fray. But he didn't join his own team, nor the Junin. Instead, he decided to take them all on, and soon enough, they were all screaming in surprise trying to evade him. While his kids were good, and the other two had experience facing Junin, Kakashi was not an ordinary Junin. By the end of the session, as the sun was setting on the horizon, the kids were tangled in a heap with the other two. Well, wasn't that fun? Kakashi said brightly from where he sat on top of them. They all groaned. Kakashi awoke to sharp banging on his front apartment door. He groaned and rolled out of bed, already sensing the familiar chakra of his students. He really should just give up and move into the Hatake compound despite his hang-ups. The kids always invaded his apartments the few times he stayed there, and his ninken didn't even bother coming to it anymore, spending all their time in the extra rooms and the yard of the Hatake Manor. Kakashi diverted to the kitchen to flick the switch on his tea kettle as the kids let themselves in, falling over themselves as they kicked sandals off at the door. Or, well, two of them did. Kakashi saw and sensed Sakura make a beeline for Kakashi with a look of rage on her face. Kakashi straightened at the look. Sakura, what's wrong? He asked, tone calm, even as he braised his feet. He let old habits of being battle-ready even in conversation slip in as he was prepared to be off like a shant in a moment's notice. Not because of Sakura, but because of whatever had made her angry. Sensei? Sakura said, anger bubbling in her voice. She struggled for the words, looking angry and frustrated and helpless, and Kakashi watched her face shift, even as Sasuke and Naruto peeked around the kitchen doorway carefully. Sakura burst into tears. Hey, hey, Kakashi tried soothingly. It's okay. No, it's not! Sakura shrieked. Kakashi realized they were angry tears, born of frustrated hopelessness, and Kakashi despaired at what had driven the emotional girl to it. Sakura glared at him with tears, and Kakashi knew she wasn't glaring at him. How about we all sit in the living room, and I'll make tea, Kakashi said, and then you can explain what's wrong at... He glanced at the clock on the wall and winced. At 3 a.m. Naruto leapt forward and grabbed Sakura to guide her to the couch as she made frustrated little noises and cried. Sasuke was right up in their personal space, not touching, but looming over them almost protectively. 
Kakashi made a show of locking the front door and resetting his traps, checking windows to do the same. It made Sakura relax a bit more, at least, as she curled up on his couch, face buried in her knees, but gripping the boy's hands with a death grip. Kakashi made tea while silently watching his team huddle together. They were... They were a team. A good one, he realized abruptly. Not just as watching each other's backs and keeping up in the field or a fight, but in everything. The way Sasuke leaned towards them when they shifted. The way Naruto had a sixth sense for when his teammates were emotionally charged. The way Sakura had tabs on them everywhere, all the time. Kakashi smiled beneath his mask at the thought and brought four mugs of hot green tea dosed with honey to the kids. Only when they'd all taken big sips did he settle across from them on the coffee table and look at them carefully. No, what's wrong? The way Sasuke and Naruto looked at Sakura said they weren't completely sure. Sakura angrily dashed the last of her tears and took a gulp of her tea. Naruto is not allowed to go back to the guy you have teaching him seals, she said. Her tone was firm and angry and booked no room for argument. Has he been trying to convince you to leave Team 7 again? Kakashi sighed. He had hoped Jiraiya would beg off, and that Sakura and Sasuke wouldn't hear about the threat to their team. He should have known that Jiraiya was stubborn as a rock, and that Naruto told the other two everything. No! Sakura growled, low and dangerous. He's a pervert! Well, yeah, Kakashi said slowly. He did write Icha Icha. Not that! Sakura hissed. He's perving on Naruto! Kakashi's eyes leapt to Naruto, who shrugged. Kakashi felt something in him bare its teeth. That was not a, I have no idea what she's talking about, shrug. That was a, so what, shrug. Explain, Kakashi said sharply. Naruto shrugged again and looked at his feet confused. Sakura almost surged out of her seat, hands still grasping Naruto's tightly. He's making Naruto use that print jutsu to look like a girl as they train, she owled, so that he can stare like a pervert. Kakashi wanted to believe better of Jiraiya, to think it was all innocent, but one look at Naruto's face said that was true, and that Naruto had no idea that that was wrong. Naruto, Kakashi said, setting his mug aside. Is that true? I mean, yeah, Naruto said. He was going to brush me off the other day because I said no to being his apprentice and go spend time peeping, so I used my sexy no jutsu because it always works on perverts. He got a nosebleed like Gigi, but said he gave it two thumbs up approval and said he would teach me a smoke tag if I did the lessons while in the hench. I kept clothes on, so it wasn't the usual smoke class. The terrible thing was Kakashi could picture Naruto henched as a girl, sitting taking lessons as normal, not thinking anything was totally wrong with a picture. Even if Jiraiya didn't take it any farther, didn't even stare at Naruto as he gives the lessons, he'd still asked it of Naruto. Kakashi took a deep breath. Finish your tea, he said quietly. The boys obeyed, but Sakura held Kakashi's gaze. He gave an acknowledging nod, and she gave a curt nod of approval before downing her deep. <laughs> Kakashi tucked his kids into his bed. It was a tight fit being a single bed for three of them. When they were all small things, still not yet hitting their gross birds, they curled under his shuriken printed duvet, and Kakashi silently summoned the pack. They took one look at the kids nodding off and Kakashi's stone cold face, and all curled up around the room to guard. Only Bakun remained at his side as Kakashi got fully dressed and slanted his headband over his eye. He locked the kids in, setting up an extra trap or two to make them feel safer, and then set off across the dark city. Track down Jiraiya for me, Kakashi said, voice dark. Come find me when you locate him. Bakun put his nose to the ground immediately. The sages sent one of the ones he had long since memorized. He didn't question Kakashi with such a dark, set look on his face. Kakashi set out in a different direction than the pug, lightly hopping from roof to roof as he headed for the center of the village. He kept his chakra carefully regulated and let none of the anger fester in it. He didn't want to agitate anyone or raise alarm. Kakashi landed lightly on a doorstep and gently knocked on the window. Windows were for bothering people and for friends. Doors were for respect, and while Kakashi rarely used the door, this time it was needed. Despite the quiet knock, Kakashi heard the faint steps coming for the door. As the door swung open, Kakashi held up his hand in a greeting to show that they were empty, and he came in peace. Hotoke, Umino Iruka said flatly. 
It's almost 4 a.m. There's about to be an emergency. The man was wearing his yukata half haphazardly, his hair down a must, and Kakashi knew he had just awoken him. Reasonable at 4 a.m. Can we talk? Kakashi asked, and his voice was just as flat, a dark edge hidden under politeness. Umino's eyes sharpened on him, and he slowly stepped aside, letting Kakashi into the entrance. As the door shut, Kakashi didn't bother taking his shoes off. He wouldn't be here long. What's wrong? Umino asked, voice pitched low. Kakashi watched a spark of chakra travel up the seals around the door. Umino's house was well warded, with security seals embedded in the walls like the Hatake compound. That one, if Kakashi was not mistaken, would ensure no listening devices would function, and that no spy equipment nor subtle jujutsu would breach the walls. That was important for a man who did sensitive paperwork for the Hokage outside of the office. There is an issue, Kakashi started, and I'm going to kick the hornet's nest over it. Of course you will, Umino muttered, leaning against the wall and folding his arms, looking entirely unimpressed. And I need your support, Kakashi said. Umino's nose twitched, like he could smell trouble. Kakashi met his gaze squarely. Umino had a problem with Kakashi over his teaching methods, but Kakashi had no issues with Umino. The man was a damn good shinobi and damn good at his job. Titles like Chunin meant nothing in the scheme of things, only raw power levels, and any medic could tell you power was nothing Control was the point. It's about Naruto, Kakashi said bluntly. Umino narrowed his eyes. It was a look that said, I know you're trying to manipulate me, but it was also a look that said he didn't care. I've been sending Naruto to Jiraiya for sealing lessons, Kakashi explained, and just sealing lessons. I told him the lessons on harnessing the QB. Umino let out a hiss at the mention of the bijou, but for once looked like he approved of what Kakashi was saying. Jiraiya threatened to go over my head to the Hokage, Kakashi further explained. And Umino snorted, waving a hand in a dismissive way. He was thinking the same thing Kakashi had, at least. Kakashi had been given Team 7 for a reason, and being one of the Hokage's favorites gave one a lot of leeway. Even though Jiraiya was one of the Sandame students, Kakashi and Naruto were favored as well, and the Hokage was unlikely to take sides. He was more than likely to straight up give Naruto the choice. I'm not worried about that, Kakashi agreed. But things have changed. I'm going to separate Naruto from Jiraiya fully. No more sealing, no more lessons of any sort, and that's going to make Jiraiya irritated. Umino frowned, eyeing Kakashi. Since Naruto had been allowed sealing lessons, the Hokage was unlikely to step in, seeing as Naruto would be getting lessons from Jiraiya and time with the man while still being Kakashi's student. But not letting Jiraiya near the boy at all was going to make Jiraiya throw a fit, and that would grab the Hokage's attention. I need you to back me up. Kakashi said, pointedly. Umino's word would hold weight, especially if it was to agree with Kakashi. They were often on the opposite sides in their politics, so Umino actually agreeing with him would hold... be a shock. A shock that would make the Hokage mull it over, instead of making a flash decision in civilian terms of split custody. Why? Umino asked carefully. He was getting a bit twitchy. Kakashi meeting him at 4 a.m. was odd. Kakashi asking for his help was a sign of alarm to the man. Kakashi asking him to go to the Hokage with that help was a disaster. At least that must be what Umino was thinking. Jiraiya made Naruto stay in his sexy no jutsu for his last few sealing lessons, Kakashi said bluntly. Umino gave a full body twitch, something like a snarl slipping from his lips. I don't care what you think of my teaching methods, Kakashi said, but I care for my students. I want them to grow up into healthy adults. I want them to have what freedom and innocence they can have as a shinobi. Naruto didn't even realize what was wrong with it. Sakura was the one who came to me in tears, worried about her teammate. Umino had a dark look in his eyes, but he was still listening. So, Jiraiya is done. No more time with Naruto alone. I don't care if he didn't mean it, if it was a joke that went too far. But he's not going to take that laying down. Maybe he will defend himself, maybe he will simply apologize. But he's not allowed alone with Naruto anymore. Agreed, Umino said loudly. I'll have your back in this. Why, Tiff? Kakashi waited in the entrance as Umino vanished back into the house. He returned a few minutes later, fully dressed and looking like he hadn't just rolled out of bed. I take it you're going to talk to Jiraiya right now. I was going to. I have Pakum tracking him down. Hmm. Stick with me for a bit. Kakashi followed the Junin out of his home, watching him seal the house behind him and then make a beeline for the neighbors. 
Genma was already leaning against his doorframe, watching them with careful eyes, dressed in lounging clothes. Kakashi could see Umino's other neighbor leaning out the window, watching carefully. Kakashi gave Tenzo a salute, and the man nodded, but stayed watching. Umino was an unassuming man to any outsider or civilian, but to the shinobi of Kanaha, at least the higher-ranked ones, Umino was a man of power. He had the Hokage's favor, did much of his paperwork, and was a trusted advisor. That meant, despite his apparent ranking, Umino was a well-guarded figure of Kanaha. He lived in the heart of Kanaha, in the safest place, and had Anbu living on either side of him, the houses made into Anbu housing. There was never not at least one Anbu somewhere in his vicinity. He was too valuable. Genma, Umino greeted. Are you free today? I am. Genma smiled, Sanban rolling her across his mouth. You need a hand. Kakashi needs someone to help with his students for the day. Umino smiled. I can spare the day. Genma agreed. When do they meet? They're at my apartment, Kakashi said. I'll send a name again along with word of your coming, but if you could stay out of the apartment before they wake, that would be a good idea. Sakura usually goes with Guy in the morning, but perhaps you can keep her for the day. Kagashi pulled out a personal exploding tag and wrote a message on the back. Naruto would recognize his handiwork for the seal and not question the legitimacy of the note. Kakashi also fished out his wallet and forked over some cash that Gamma took, mouth slowly opening in surprise. Breakfast and lunch are my treat. Kakashi smiled. We usually do breakfast at 8 a.m. Genma sort of gaped at him. Well, Kakashi was well known for skipping out on the bill. They all need to do some taijutsu exercises, but I'll leave the rest of the day up to you, Kakashi said. Genma nodded slowly, looking between them. I'll keep an eye open, Genma said carefully. Good luck with whatever you're doing. Genma slipped into his house, probably to change, and Kakashi waved at Umino to pause as Bakun slipped from the shadows. Found him! Bosh! He's at the usual house, sleeping! Good, Kakashi said, leaning over to give him a scratch. Will you find Guy and let him know that Sakura won't be joining him this morning? Genma's watching my team for the day. Then if you could let the kids know Genma is coming... You got it, boss! Baku nodded. You be careful, okay? Just summon us if you need us! No, you watch the kids. Kakashi shook his head. I'm not expecting any danger to them, but I want them uninvolved in all this. The Ningen nodded and was off in a flash towards Guy's house. Guy would be waking soon anyways. Umino was watching silently and only spoke up when the dog was gone. You care for them. All of them, he noted. I do, Kakashi said in a tone of voice that left no room for argument. Umino searched his face for a long moment and then nodded sharply, something like a smile curling his mouth. Seems they were good for now.